Hey there, interwebs. Did you know that fish don't exist? No, this isn't a belated April Fool's Day video. It's how fascinating. Longtime viewers know that this series was inspired by the TV show Quite Interesting, which has already addressed this topic, and it's even the title of the QI Elves podcast, but at first I didn't believe it. After having done more research on the subject for another project, however, I've changed my mind. Now I see that fish don't exist any more than reptiles do. By the way, reptiles aren't a thing either, but more on that later. We previously discussed horseshoe crabs and the fact that they're more closely related to spiders than true crabs. Well, they aren't the only misnamed marine life. There are plenty of other fish in the sea, even if they aren't actually fish. Today's video will be all about fish that aren't, fish that shouldn't be, and a fish unlike any other. First up, fish that aren't. These are creatures who have the word fish as part of their common name, but don't belong to either the class Osteichthyes or Chondrichthyes. Those are bony fish like trout and minnows, and cartilaginous fish like sharks and rays. One of the more hotly debated classes is Cyclostomata, a superclass of jawless fish which is itself a subclass of the superclass Agnatha, which literally means without jaws. It contains lampreys, which have a vertebral column and a skull, but no articulated lower jaw, and hagfish, which still have a skull, but neither a lower jaw nor vertebral column. In a previous episode, we discussed how eel skin wallets are actually made from hagfish, not eels, but eels are at least fish, and hagfish aren't, despite what their name implies. Even if they aren't vertebrates, at least hagfish are still chordates. Starfish are echinoderms, and jellyfish belong to the even more distantly related phylum Cnidaria. This is why some biologists have taken to calling them sea stars and sea jellies instead. Maybe we should start calling horseshoe crabs sea horseshoes, too. Echinoderms such as sea stars and chordates such as hagfish and bony fish both belong to the super phylum Deuterostoma. If we go one step further back on the taxonomic tree, we reach the clade Nephrozoa, which includes mollusks like cuttlefish and devilfish. The latter term can actually refer to a lot of things, ranging from numerous species of ray-finned fish to gray whales, which are marine mammals. It's also a slightly archaic term for cephalopods such as octopuses and the Humboldt squid, also known as the Diablo Rojo, or Red Devil. Side note, I can't help but notice that although there are a dozen plus creatures known as the devilfish, there is no godfish. There is, however, a Jesus fish, and no, I don't mean that one. The hardhead catfish, Ariopsis felis, is also known colloquially as the sailcat, tourist trout, and crucifix fish. That last name comes from the fact that the inside of its skull bears a dubious resemblance to a certain carpenter nailed to two bits of wood. Apart from cephalopods, the mollusk phylum also includes bivalves, the class of mussels, clams, and oysters. In culinary contexts, these are known as shellfish, despite not actually being fish, but the group called shellfish also includes other exoskeletal animals like shrimp, lobsters, crabs, and crayfish, which also aren't really fish. In some parts of the United States, especially the South, crayfish are also known as crawfish or mud bugs. The latter name is actually more accurate since decapod crustaceans such as crabs, lobsters, and shrimp belong to the phylum Arthropoda, the same phylum which contains arachnids, myriapods, and insects like the silverfish, which again, not actually a fish. And then you have this strange creature. Its binomial name is Mola Mola, and its common name is the ocean sunfish, but is it really a fish? Yes, of course. As a matter of fact, it's one of the largest species of bony fish in the world, weighing as much as 5,000 pounds or 2,300 kilograms, despite looking like only a severed head, but there are some who believe this fish shouldn't exist. If you've heard of it before now, that's probably due to Scout Burns' infamous Facebook rant, but large parts of that are factually incorrect, and I've left a link in the description to clear up any confusion. The ocean sunfish also shouldn't be confused for the considerably smaller freshwater sunfish, they're actually an entire family of fish known as Centrarchidae, which consists of 34 extant species and 4 which are extinct. Among the living members is the genus Pomoxis, but it's better known by an unfortunate nickname. Is that name A. Crappy, B. Grubby, C. Ruffy, or D. Slippery Dick? The answer is A. Crappy, but the other three are real names of fish as well. The grubby is Myoxocephalus inaeus, the orange or red ruffy is the Hoplostethus atlanticus, and the slippery dick is Halicoeris bivitatus. Additionally, ruffies constitute the family Trachichthyidae, also known as slime heads. Still, it could be worse. The family Cycloteridae is commonly known as lump suckers. Having now covered poorly named fish and unfortunately named fish, all that leaves is the fish unlike any other, which I promised you at the beginning. This is a coelacanth, and it's been called a living fossil. That's not hyperbole either. Living fossils are defined as extant members of a taxon which has remained recognizable in the fossil record over an unusually long time span but shows little morphological divergence. 
Although coelacanths have traditionally been an iconic example of this biological phenomenon, a recent study published in the journal Molecular Biology and Evolution challenges this classification. In fact, the study is so recent, only published in February of this year, that I had the first draft of this script written beforehand and had to include this edition as a hasty edit. As usual, there are links to further reading in the description. Coelacanths were also believed to have been extinct since the late Cretaceous period until one was discovered more or less by accident in December of 1938 by a fishing trawler. This also makes them a Lazarus taxon, a kind of animal which disappears from the fossil record and is thought to be extinct, only to reappear again later. On QI, it was pointed out that a salmon is more closely related to a camel than a hagfish, but that has less to do with the salmon being a jawed vertebrate than the hagfish not being a fish. Basically, all proper fish are more closely related to camels than hagfish, but that's because hagfish are weird and not true fish, however you want to define that. The coelacanth, however, takes that whole argument and turns it on its head. Not only is the coelacanth more closely related to a camel than a hagfish, it's more closely related to a camel than it is to nearly any fish. Basically, the hagfish is a fish that's not a fish, but the coelacanth is a fish that's unlike almost every other fish. Actually, to be fair, there are two species of coelacanth, the West Indian Ocean coelacanth Latimeria columni and the Indonesian coelacanth Latimeria menadensis. They're the only members of the genus Latimeria, which is the only surviving genus of the subclass Actinistia. Think of them like the Tuataras of the sea. Despite being Osteichthyes, or bony fish, coelacanths notably aren't Actinoterygii, or ray-finned fish. You see, ray-finned fish comprise almost 99% of the over 30,000 species of fish, but coelacanths are sarcoterygii, or lobe-finned fish. That's what sarcoterygii means, flesh fin. Yes, terex also means wing. The biologists in charge of these things don't differentiate. This name is also a mouthful, so henceforth I'm just going to call them flesh fins. The flesh fin clade also includes the superclass Tetrapoda, the group of typically terrestrial vertebrates which evolved from ancient lobe-finned fish roughly 390 million years ago, so coelacanths, and their close relatives known as lungfish, are more closely related to all modern amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals than they are to any other fish. This means that not only are coelacanths closer to camels than salmon, but coelacanths, camels, and salmon are more closely related to one another than they are to sharks, and hagfish are even further removed, to say nothing of starfish, shellfish, and jellyfish. Furthermore, since tetrapoda belongs to the flesh fin clade, that technically, under a modern cladistic view, makes humans bony fish. Either that or lobe-finned fish aren't real fish. As I mentioned in Flag Shaming, Episode 7, the Catholic Church decided that semi-aquatic mammals count as fish because they live part-time in the water, and medieval naturalists considered whales to be large fish, but we now know that they're marine mammals and that the world's largest fish is actually the whale shark. However, if we agree that ray-finned bony fish are the only true fish, this means that whales and other mammals are closer to fish than sharks are. To quote the Wikipedia page for fish, Lungfish and coelacanths are closer relatives of tetrapods than of other fish such as ray-finned fish or sharks, so the last common ancestor of all fish is also an ancestor to tetrapods. As paraphyletic groups are no longer recognized in modern systematic biology, the use of the term fish as a biological group must be avoided. Basically, just like how you can't make a cladistic definition of reptile, which includes turtles and crocodilians but excludes birds, you also can't make a definition of fish, which includes cartilaginous and lobe-finned fish, but excludes reptiles, mammals, and amphibians. It seems evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould and the QI elves by proxy got it right. There is no such thing as a fish. Thanks for watching, and have a fascinating day. If you ask me, I think we should let people who write menus decide what constitutes fish. They seem to have it figured out, and who better to define a word than the people who actually use it?